So this week at WWDC, Apple announced a whole bunch of new things for developers. First, there's the new version of OS X called Yosemite. Uh, there's a new version of Xcode, Xcode 6. And the biggest news is that there's a new programming language called Swift. Now, obviously, based on the title of this site, I'm going to be doing lots of tutorials on the Swift language and development for iOS and Mac. Um, but this tutorial is, since we're WWDC is still going on, it's just kind of a, um, for those who kind of want to get started playing with it right now. And there's a great new feature in Xcode 6 called Playgrounds. And essentially a playground is a live scripting environment where you can just try out code. And every time you type a key, it's essentially compiling that behind the scenes and giving you useful information about uh, the code that, that you're writing. It will show you the visuals you're creating and the values that you're changing. So now you don't need to be running OS 10.10 .10 in order to use Swift and Xcode 6. Now I am, obviously, because you can see the traffic lights here. Um, but you are going to need a um, Apple developer certificate. And then you want to go to the Mac Dev Center under Yosemite Preview and download the Xcode 6 beta. And again, you don't have to be running OS 10.10. Um, obviously, only, only reason you would need that is if you wanted to use some of the new APIs uh, that are in Yosemite. So now from the welcome screen in Xcode 6, you can see we have a new option called Getting Started with a Playground. And if you click that, it allows you to save this playground. Now, you can actually include playgrounds as part of your Xcode project if you want to be prototyping stuff for your project, or you can just create them standalone. So I created one on the desktop just called First. And when you create it, this is the code that there is. So first of all, I'm not going to be going in depth in this tutorial about the Swift language and, and how it compares to Objective-C. Those tutorials will come. Um, but for now, just n notice that we're doing an import of the Coco framework. Um, there's a variable being created called str with a string of hello playground. Now you'll notice on this right-hand side, we actually have that string, hello playground. So any variable assignments or instances that you have, you're able to actually see what those values are here in this right-hand side. And you can also preview what that looks like. Now for a string, obviously, uh, there's not much to preview. And we can also see how that value changes over time. So let's just add a couple of other things in here. So let me create a constant, which is going to hold a color. And in Swift, we use the let keyword to create a constant. So I'm going to say let blue is equal to nscolor.blueColor. And you'll see now on the right-hand side with this preview, I'm getting a little swatch of the color, the RGBA values. If I click the little I, I get this other little uh, preview. Um, so based on the types that you're creating, the previews uh, will change. So let me now create um, another constant. So let's just create an nsrect and assign it to r. And the way we create instances is just by using the class name and then open parentheses. And here you can see all the overloaded uh, constructors. I'm going to use this one. We'll say 00, 200, 200. And now on the right-hand side, you can see we have a preview. But if I click on the eye, you can see we now have um, a more visual preview um, similar to what you had in Xcode when you were using the debugger. So it, another thing that we can do is to track the value of a variable over time. So let's create um, a loop. We'll create a for loop, and we'll create um, a variable called index in, and this is using um, some shorthand that I'll go into in more detail when we get into some tutorials about the Swift language. I'm going to say 1 to 10. So that's essentially going to go through a loop 10 times and assign that value to index. Now if I want to see the value of index in that right-hand side, all I have to do is just type index. And you can see now what it sh it's saying here is this has run 10 times.
But if I click this plus, what it does is it opens the assistant editor and it's showing me over time the values that that index variable has taken on. And I can actually use the scrubber down at the bottom to go through in time to see the different um, values of that variable. And I can also go on and click on these little things to see what value it was at a certain time in my application. So extremely useful stuff. So let's create a more robust example. So in the examples that they demoed at WWDC, this was heavily focused on animation and being able to preview your animation. But it's also good for viewing your draw rect um, quartz drawing code. So what I'm going to do inside of here is to create an NS view subclass. So I'm going to say NS, I mean class play view, which will be my subclass of NS view. And again, you'll notice we no longer have any header files. Um, stuff is a lot more, uh, you know, the code is a lot less than what you're used to writing with Objective-C. Now, for anyone who does or has done um, Mac development in an NS view, we can draw into it by overriding the draw rect method. And when I do that, you can see automatically the code has been written for me, the override func draw rect. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is to define that blue color again is equal to nscolor.blueColor. And all I want to do is to fill the bounds of this um, view with that blue color. So I'm going to say is nsrect fill, and I'll do self.bounds. Now we also need to tell the context to draw with the blue color. So what we do is to say blue dot set fill, like that. Now you'll notice on the right hand side here, we're not seeing anything. And that's because I haven't created an instance of this view yet. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna come underneath and we're gonna create a variable and let's just call it view is gonna be of type play view and now I'm going to send it a frame to give it a size. So that's going to be an NS rect. And we'll send in 0, 0, 200, 200. So now you notice I have these previews here for the color, but then also for my view. Now, if I actually use this little, uh, the eye, that's what my view looks like. Now I can also click on this to see how it changes over time. So now if I go back here, and let's say I add something else in here. So let's create, let's say, a Bezier path. So NS Bezier path. And we're going to do oval and rect. And I'm just going to inset the self.bounds. So I'm going to use NS inset rect. And we're going to take self.bounds and inset it by 20 pixels, like that. And now we're going to create another color. We're going to set another color. So NS color, yellow color, dot set fill. And then we will simply fill that Bezier path. Now, obviously, we're going to have to move this NS rect fill above here. And there we go. So now you can see how easy this is. Um, you can be doing quartz drawing code, and I have this live preview showing me um, exactly, you know, uh, what my changes look like over time. So now this is one way in which you can create visuals and show them here in the assistant editor. There is a more official way. That is if you import the XC Playground framework. And down here, what you're essentially going to do is to say XC show view, and then you're going to give it a string identifier. I'll just call it play view. And now the view to present. So we'll say view. And now you can see automatically it's showing over here. And any changes I make um, are going to show up automatically. So now you can see we have purple in there. 
So again, you can view your visuals here either using the playground function here, or you can actually just uh, track and look at the value history and it will show you a preview of any visuals that you're creating. So this is just scratch the surface of using playgrounds, but it's definitely the best way to get familiar with the new Swift language because you can just come in here, type out stuff, and immediately you get feedback about what the code does. So in uh, the next set of tutorials, I'm going to be delving deeper into the Swift language, um, particularly how it relates to Objective-C.